For the rest of the day, North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops marched steadily into Saigon. Hardened regulars in jungle battle dress, some pushing bikes, others in the more casual uniforms of guerrilla fighters. They were a disciplined force. Among the thousands who arrived, there wasn't a single reported case of theft, drunkenness, rape or shooting. People who hours earlier had feared for their lives now turned out on the streets to cheer and welcome. The sense of relief in Saigon was almost tangible. The victors seemed as concerned to win the cooperation of the vanquished as the vanquished were to give it. And indeed, such cooperation was essential since Saigon now had no police force to control day-to-day -day law and order. The relaxing of tension made for an almost holiday atmosphere as the celebrations of victory got underway. The first demonstrators on the streets were the Buddhists, many of whom had long opposed the military regime in Saigon and the involvement of the Americans in the war. Other groups soon followed and the city returned almost to normal within 48 hours. The new rulers issued warnings that looters would be shot and the lawlessness of the last days of South Vietnam ceased immediately. Another event to signal the change of regime, the pulling down of the South Vietnamese army monument in front of the National Assembly building. It was never a popular statue with the people of Saigon. The cynics used to say it showed an American soldier pushing his South Vietnamese counterpart in front of him into battle. Its destruction was ordered by the new city government and scores of people turned out to chip away at the two huge cement figures. After a couple of hours frantic work, the monument was toppled amidst great jubilation. Two weeks after the communist takeover, some schools reopened. At this one, a black uniformed communist cadre began the first course in what's officially called re-education. Crowded round her were the students who would later reenact the liberation of the South in what's become the traditional communist propaganda play, the Americans and their evil reactionary allies against the people's revolutionary forces. Other instructors were drilling children in rehearsals for the parades and demonstrations that would form a large part of the official victory celebrations to be spread over three days. In the past, many students avoided conscription, especially if their fathers had enough money to bribe the right officials. But Hanoi was calling the tune now, and everyone had to march to it.